everyone and welcome to Ocean Pancake. Today I'm doing a frequently asked questions video uh, just to answer some of the questions you guys have whether it's on Instagram or here on YouTube and just to you know give you the answers you're looking for. For a lot of these I actually have a frequently asked questions page on my website oceanpancake.com so head on over there there's lots of information about starting to dive different dive courses as well as I have plenty of other FAQs and dive course information so check out all the relevant stuff I'm going to be answering questions I haven't answered before so let's get into it oh yeah just quickly really exciting announcement for all you future divers editors writers photographers at the end of the video so make sure to stay tuned because I need you guys to help me out. Thanks. from Jess Hibbert is where's the best place for a dive master job now I don't think there's a best place in the world for a dive master job but generally it's quite hard to get a job as a dive master if you're not a diving instructor in a lot of places around the world they much rather just hire an instructor because they're allowed to teach diving as well as supervise dives um, however, where I worked in Brisbane, they also did have dive masters to just guide dives. So it really depends what kind of shops are in your areas, if they're more focused on teaching courses or diving. I would recommend if you do want to get into a dive professional setting to become a diving instructor because that just means you can do so much more than what a dive master can. The dive master is a very important part of your training towards being an instructor and plenty of people want to stay dive masters and that's fine too. But a lot of those people also do more volunteering and kind of get free dives in exchange for their dive guiding abilities um, rather than explicitly finding jobs as a dive master. However, of course, Patty has a whole bunch of job opportunities for dive masters and you can also find them on dive master jobs, uh, diving professional jobs online on Facebook. So check those places out, you might get lucky. Okay, next one is how long does a diving job last for? So in a lot of places in the world, such as where I lived in Africa, in Comoros, or the Maldives or even Bermuda, diving is seasonal. So you will find a lot of people are hired for a season. Whether that is three to six months, it just really depends on where you are in the world. So again, it will depend if you're in the northern or some southern hemisphere, whether it's cyclone season or not, but a lot of jobs are seasonal. If you are looking for a full-time, full-year job, then you might want to consider places like cities where there's a lot less dependence on tourism and on the fluctuation of numbers, but instead you are servicing the local people in the area. Where I worked in Brisbane, at Go Dive Brisbane, I worked there all year round. Of course, we did have a more busy season in the summer, but the locals still went diving even in the winter time. X Legion wants to know what was the most beautiful fish that I met while diving. So I think the most impressive fish, of course, has been the whale shark because it is the biggest fish in the ocean. But one of my favorite encounters with fish under the sea has been one with a sailfish. Now, these are absolutely incredible fish. They're one of the fastest fish in the world. They are epic predators. And unfortunately, they are game fish. They are fish a lot of people like to catch as a challenge, but seeing them move underwater with their sail is just insane. I saw one in Comoros when I was diving there. I do not have footage of it, but I just saw it like swim past me and then catch a fish about 15 meters away from me. So it was a truly incredible experience. So yeah, those guys are very cool. Uh, Another question from Hilary McRae is, does it get easier to move around with all that weight? 
uh, you get used to it. So once you're on land, you get stronger muscles to actually carry around all your diving equipment. While in the water, it may seem cumbersome to begin with, but you learn to get more comfortable. Lately, I have been doing a lot more free diving since it requires a lot less equipment and out here in Western Australia, it's just much easier to get on our private boat and head on out to free dive instead of scuba dive. And I will say it's much easier to move without having a tank and BCD and regs and everything. Uh, you can definitely uh, like turn much faster, sea fish more. Um, so yeah, it doesn't really get that much easier, but you certainly can get more comfortable. And with some training and with some practice, your buoyancy can improve to a point where you hardly notice it. This is also why it's so important to have equipment that fits you well and that you feel comfortable in because that just makes the difference between an uncomfortable dive and a really good dive. Uh, another question about advanced open water diving from La Rutus, that he is currently doing open water diver with Patty. How many dives should I do before going on at the advanced? If you watch my advanced video, I talk a lot about this, but just quickly, advanced, you don't need any certain number of dives to do it. It is a good idea to do straight after your open water because it gives you a chance to have five more dives with a certified instructor helping you out, improving your dive skills before you get out there on your own with just a dive buddy. Asks, how can I help my dive not be, how can I help my son not to be afraid to dive? He's 12, loves fish, but is scared of the ocean. I found, especially with children, the easiest way to get them not afraid is to just kind of throw them into the deep end. So of course, take them down carefully with a certified instructor be there or sometimes it's even better if you're not there and you just let the instructor do it i have dealt with hundreds of students so many have been afraid and i have managed to not get two people underwater out of maybe 400 students so especially once they get distracted by a fish or something underwater they'll just learn to love it so find a good instructor someone you trust and let them take your son down because guaranteed he will love it um which computer do you suggest to start a career uh not too expensive but still good so i had the santo d4 for many years i'm a big fan it can be worn as a watch it's quite cheap uh, it's versatile the only bad thing i've heard about it over and over again is that the strap breaks. I personally have the M2, which is a much more expensive dive computer, but it can also have um, air integration, which is fantastic. Uh, I do like that one again because it's a watch. Currently, I'm actually testing out Cosmic Plus dive computer, so maybe that's a great option. It's, it's relatively new on the market. I'm just doing some tests right now, and I'll let you guys know in a blog post coming soon but that might be a good option. So I'll let you know once I've done a few more dives with it. What is the best dive you've done in Australia? My favorite dive uh, whew, probably has to be uh, one in uh, South Australia, I believe, where I dived with sea lions. Sea lions are basically dogs of the sea. And as you guys know, I do love my dogs. And just being able to dive with these incredible mammals who are curious and want to see what you're doing and like check you out and look you in the eyes it's fascinating and fantastic so that's one of my all-time favorite dives in the world and australia uh can you go for a dive master course with only 15 to 20 dives no so you need to have 40 dives minimum and i would recommend having a lot more and then you can get your dive master with 60 dives i do have a video all about the dive master so make sure to check that out that is all the questions I'm gonna answer today. I hope you guys found that interesting. You learned something new. Uh, if you do have any more questions, make sure to message me down below. I also have a podcast where I'm talking about new questions every week, no, every month. So you should check that out, Ocean Pancake Podcast. It's all about conservation, sustainability, living a turquoise life, so head on over there. Thank you guys so much for watching. Thank you to my patrons for supporting me, allowing me to do this work. And yeah, I have a very exciting um, announcement. So for anyone who actually wants to get involved in the Ocean Pancake mission, whether you are a writer, an editor, a podcast editor, a photographer, um, you know, if you want to do research, marine biologist or anything like that, uh, I want you guys to take part essentially be part of the community 
I would love to have some guest posts, Instagram takeovers, um, share your experience, share your stories about your dives and your volunteering opportunities. So if you are interested in that, make sure to send an email to oceanpancakepodcast at gmail.com, uh, link down below. So yeah, check that out and I'll see you guys next time. Thank you.